Hi there. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview on how to use the monthly budgeting template. The first thing you want to do is set the weeks that this uh, template will cover. So you can do that up here. Uh, simply uh, insert the dates for the first week. Uh, go through to tab two and do the same. Uh, same for week three and week four. Once you have the dates, you can come back to the first tab and then you want to uh, insert the income and also note where that income is coming from that you expect for this date range. Do that for each of the four tabs. In this example here, you'll see that John and Mary have income on week one. Uh, week two, it is only Mary. John is paid fortnightly. So set your incomes based on when you expect them and this will help you plan out your spending through the course of the month. Once you've done that, you then have three areas to record your expected expenses. The first is your fixed expenses. So these are things that are necessary for life to function. Expenses like your rent or your mortgage, uh, food, petrol, power, etc. The second is your lifestyle expenses. So these are more of the discretional type expenses, things that you could stop uh, or choose to no longer have as part of your budget if uh, you needed to remove them in order to keep things balanced. And then the third area is any savings or goals that you may be tucking money aside for. Complete the expenses that you expect uh, to have in week one. Do the same for week two, week three and week four. And as you do that, that will transfer the totals over here and allow you to see for that particular week whether you have a balance of funds left over or whether you're a deficit uh, for that particular week. If you do have a balance, I encourage you to set up a holding account and transfer that balance into the holding account so that the money can be brought back later for any future expenses if uh, one of those weeks you're running short. For instance, week two here, we can see we have a shortfall of $208. So we can bring $208 back from our holding account into our main account and all the expenses that are due uh, for that period, given that uh, we've only got Mary's income in this example, uh, they still get paid. Continue that through each period You'll see that week three, in this example, there's a surplus again. So we transfer that surplus into our holding account. And week four, uh, we have quite a few uh, expenses. So we have quite a bit of deficit that week. But because we've been transferring money into our holding account, we can simply move it back. The monthly summary will give you an overview of what this looks like, week one, two, three, and four. And then a summary of what you can expect for the month. This is a good way of planning out your spending. In this example here, you can see that given what we understand in regards to income and expected expenses, we're still going to have a surplus of funds. So if there are things there that you're uh, contemplating needing money for, but you're holding off because you're a little bit unsure as to whether you have that money, this here is a good way of looking forward over the month ahead to understand whether you do have a surplus and therefore can allocate some of that money elsewhere. Or if that surplus is uh, negligible, then uh, restrain from those other expenses while you build up your uh, funds in your holding account, repeating this uh, month two and month three, etc. Planning ahead is about being intentional. And each week, you can simply come back in here and then uh, put in here what you actually spent. So we know that that payment would have been correct. You might have only spent uh, 190 on food. Uh, you might have only spent 40 on petrol. Uh, the power was an automatic payment and the personal loan as well. So those things went out. And you'll see over here that this is what you expected to spend, $935. But you actually spent 915 Again, this is going to reinforce for you that you're working to a disciplined plan and you're keeping your spending in check. And it's also going to help you uh, build up a little bit more of a surplus uh, quicker. In addition, if there are other expenses that weren't initially part of your plan, you can add those in, noting how much you spent, 
Then looking at the difference here, you'll note that your original plan had estimated $1,027 surplus, but your actual surplus was 993. In order for this expense to be made, because the additional surplus funds were transferred to your holding account, you're going to have to transfer back from your holding account to your main account the money when this expense occurred. This is going to help you become more intentional as well. The process of moving it back from a holding account really causes you to stop and think about the importance of this expense and whether this is the right time to do that. For some expenses, they will have to be done. You won't have a choice. And having a holding account gives you the peace of mind that you have funds that you can call on to do that. For others, you may look at and decide right now you'd prefer to wait and maybe do that later on in the month. By going through each week and putting in your actual expenses, the monthly summary will at the end of the month show you your overall performance. So when you put your plan together, your expectation was this amount of income, this amount of expenses, and a surplus of funds of 577. In reality, your income was slightly higher, your total expenses were slightly higher, and your surplus was $14 less than expected. Understanding the difference between what you had planned and what you actually achieved helps reinforce the process and will give you the motivation to repeat this again for the month ahead. It also provides you a template because you have the figures relating to the previous month that you can now use as a template to project forward the month ahead.